One hit. Yeah. Now, to, just, just to the degree, to the degree that he's been good to you. For some, you know, it's like, you're good all the time, it's cool, we're good. But for some others, it's like, you are good.
our streaming audience from all over the world. Would you help me welcome our streaming audience that's streaming online? We translate our messages into 90 different languages. We average 70,000 people watching live every Sunday in every time zone around the world, including right here in Dallas. For those of you that are sitting at Bedside Baptist and decided to worship God in your pajamas, we still welcome you into the presence of the Lord. Come on and give God a big shout. So I'm excited about that. Listen, a housekeeping detail. One lesson that the current times has taught us is that we have to do things differently than how we've ever had to do them before. In order to serve more effectively, we need to know what experts we have amongst us. And there's a whole new breed of people coming in the service, and we want to know who you are and what you do. If you are a medical doctor, an MD or DO, please meet us here in Section C. This is section C right here, right after the service. We won't take long, just a few moments. We want to take, we won't take much of your time, but we want to know who you are because we need your expertise. We are asking everyone else to clear the sanctuary expeditiously at the end, and we want to meet with the doctors. I start to come up and say, is there a doctor in the house? Yeah, yeah, that would have been cool, but that's not what they wrote down, so. You can get to see Brother Kermit. I'm not going to be cool today. We got some important folks here today, so I'm gonna try to be. I'm trying. I'm gonna try not. I'm gonna try not to be cool. But I can be cool, you know. Sometimes, you know, once once a month, I, I can be like really, really cool. Say, man, somebody. I wanted to take a serious moment and uh, to say to Brother Charles Crumpton, the wife of Dr. Valerie Crumpton, who lost his brother, that our thoughts and our prayers are with you during this time. Brother Crumpton, would you stand? I saw you, now I can't see you. There he is, right there right in front of my face. I just wanted you to know we love you. And we're praying for you. We understand your loss and our hearts go out to you. Please lift their entire family up in prayer as they go through this time of bereavement. Would you do that? <clears throat> Also, our prayers are with the family of Mrs. Thelma Mama T. Wells, a local Dallas icon, been around forever, whose memorial service was yesterday. Mrs. Wells, a noted speak speaker, teacher, lecturer, author, has been a guest at the Potter's House early on and on several occasions and gone home to be with the Lord. Please lift her family up in prayer and go before God, she is one of a kind. There will never be another one. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? November 8th is coming up. What is that? Yeah, it's election day. It's when you get to have your say. You get to be the boss. You get to make the noise in the house. You get to bring it on. You get to look over your interests. And I want to say this. I don't ever endorse candidates. I don't tell you who to vote for. But I do push you to get out and vote in round numbers. Round numbers. I think it's incredibly important that if you're gonna live in this country, that you have a say in this country. And don't forget local government is just as important as federal government. Sometimes we lose sight of local tiers of government that's very important, especially when you, when you come bring your whole self, I will say this, into the booth. Uh, not just bring your Christian self, bring your senior self, bring your teenage self, bring your college self, bring your female self, so all the inner different intersectionalities and both for people who reflect your interests and your goals for where you are in life. How many of you know you're more than one dimension? You're more than one dimension. And so all of that affects the way you think, what you need, what, what I need at 65 is not what I needed at 25. I won't elaborate on that, but glory to God. So as your needs change, uh, you have different interests. I want you to take a look at that. And I've been doing some research and found out some incredible things. Texas is home to more black Americans than any other state in the union. 
You can clap even if you're white because you don't mind us being here. Come on, everybody. Yeah. 3.8 million. 3.8 million. 13% of the state's population. And it's important that we bring our mind and our head uh, into the booth so that we're not left in the barbershop complaining about what we don't like when we don't go in the booth. If you say it in the booth, you don't have to say it in the barbershop. And the other thing I want to say to you that's important, we live in a world, I know that predominantly a lot of African Americans are Democrats, but I want you to understand something, I want you to understand it really, really well. If you stand in a position where Republicans think that they can't get you, and, the, and Democrats think that they can't lose you, then what is the incentive to work for you? So I challenge you to think for yourself. I'm ready to shake some stuff up in the world. Are you ready to shake some stuff up in the world? I'm writing a book called Dysfunctional, not Dysfunctional, Disruptive, no, I'm Dysfunctional. The, the book is not Dysfunctional, I'm Dysfunctional. But the book is called Disruptive Thinking. And if you think about everybody notable, everybody significant, everybody studied and learned, everybody we read about and read, written about and we study and we follow after are people who are disruptive. If you don't like the way things are going in your life, change it. Change it. Change it. Don't just sit in it like a victim and be isolated, be depressed and be frustrated. Disrupt the whole thing, recreate yourself, reinvigorate yourself, take night classes, take courses, go to school, do a new thing. You don't like the old thing, do a new thing. Come on, I need some radical folks in the church with me today. I am deeply honored to welcome and privileged to have the great governor of the state of Texas, Governor Greg Abbott, is in the house today. Would you stand and give him a Potter's House welcome for being in our service today? We appreciate you, sir. Thank you for being in the service. He thought enough of us to stop by and let us know we mattered. And that's, that's a big thing. That's a, that's a really good thing. Say amen, somebody. Amen. That's not the only notable, though. We got Tamar Braxton in the house, y'all. We got Tamar Braxton in the house. Give it up for her. I know she's in here somewhere. She's going to sing in a minute. So they might be getting her ready. Yeah, there she is. Wave at them. Wave at them, Tamar. Lord, you miss your curtain call, girl. Make some noise. Yeah. She and Israel Houghton are going to do, Houghton are about to do some amazing things. We got a host of people we're so excited about our finally loose project and how God is blessing uh, that project. And we got something today that we did not have at Woman Art Loose in limited quantities for you that are here in the building or those of you that are online. We actually have the CD. Amen. Now, you have to be over 40 to clap. Because I know all you young folks think that this ought to be in a museum somewhere. But there's still some folks who like a CD that they can play in their car and in their house. And not everybody is downloading an MP3 and, and doing all that technical stuff. Come on, I need some gray hairs with a clap hands. We want a CD. <laughs> We want grandma want a CD, papa want a CD, and maybe some young folks want a CD. Are you right about it? Glory to God, I be downloading, don't know what I downloaded, then I paying for it, hit the wrong button, and got this, and didn't get that. Anyway, it's available for you today. The QR code is on the screen. You can get it right through your QR code, uh, whether you're online or whether you're in the building. And it's a limited edition opportunity for you to have, if nothing else, as a souvenir to the final Woman Thou Art Loose project. This is a, something you archive and pass down for generations. It's got some amazing people on it, like Tamar's on it. Uh, give it up for her. Thank you for being a part 
of this tremendous project. We're grateful to have you. Sheila E is on it. You know how she opened up at Woman Art Loose? She beat the skin off them drums. I thought, Lord, you must be bad at drums when she was beating them drums. I've never seen somebody look so cool and hit so hard. She was I thought I could play for a minute. Uh, Miranda Curtis is on the project. Brittany Jones is on the project. April Nevels is on the project. Give it up for our own April. Make some noise for April is on the project. Girl, getting famous up in here. Don't be asking for no raise or nothing like that. Just, just sing for Jesus, girl. Sing for Jesus. Israel Houghton, Fred Jerkins, Timbaland, all included on this project, producing the project. Stanley Brown, uh, Oscar Williams, it was a team effort, and we're grateful to all of you, and all of you, and all of you. Uh, thank you to Skip and his lovely wife, would you stand for helping us with this project as well. Yeah, thank you for all of your input and coordination, and to Marcus Dawson, we thank you as well, give it up to him, and to Rock Nations, who's taken us around the world with this message. And if you're watching me in Africa, this project is available for you in Africa, in all parts of Africa, in Nigeria, in South Africa, wherever you're watching, we are available. We're going to sing to you, man, we're going to sing. If you're in Jamaica, we're going to sing to you, we're going to sing to you. If you're in Haiti, we're going to sing to you. We're going to, if you're in Canada, we're going to sing to you. We're ready for the hookup. This project hit number three across all genres of iTunes music and number one amongst all Christian outlets in just three days. Come on, that, that, that doesn't happen. That kind of stuff doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. And it's just, it's just so good. It's just so good. It's so, so good. Everybody has a talent. Maybe you're not a producer like Timberland or, or Israel. Or Israel, Israel, Israel gets on my nerves. He can do everything. God's supposed to give you like one talent, either sing or play or produce. But Israel does it all. Give it up for him. How many of you several years ago remember when I was doing that series on Big Gifted and we had the t-shirts I am gifted. I still got mine. I put my t-shirt on and walk around because I am gifted. Are you gifted? I said, are you gifted? Every person in here, God didn't create a person in this building or watching online who does not have a gift inside of them. And I believe we're coming in a season where you're going to have to be bold about what you've been gifted with. And you're going to have to put it on display and not be intimidated by other people. Because God's going to use your gift in this season like he has never used it before. Who am I talking to in this place? Who am I talking to in this place? So don't let the enemy talk you out. You're not too, you can't do it. You're too old. You're too short. You're too fat. You're too thin. Let me tell you, let me tell you something right now. God loves fat people. God loves fat people. I, I, I should have got more shouts than I did, but some of y'all, some of y'all in denial, but God loves big people too. Yeah. So stop making excuses and take whatever you got and work with it and work that thing and make it go for you and make it do for you and make it move you. Amen. Proud of my fat. This is international fat. This is global fat. I got this from all over the world, from Australia to Sweden, to Alabama, to Mississippi, to Collard Greens, to London, to England. This is international fat. As I speak to an international audience, the one thing that we have in common is not governments nor politics, maybe not even doctrine or theology. But the one thing that we have in common is that we have a God who has created us, not accidentally, but we are fearfully and marvelously made. And God has hidden treasure down inside of you that releases like a time capsule 
I got stuff now I didn't have at 20. Come on, somebody. I got things now that I didn't have at 40. At different seasons in your life, God opens up the doors and the windows in your life. I'm in a new season. Anybody in a new season? I'm in a new season. I'm in a new season. I declare new. I'm not even waiting on for January 1. I declare a new year today. I'm going to start my new year off today. I'm in a new season and I'm in a new place. As we prepared our hearts and turn our thoughts and our minds toward what God has put inside of us, there's no doubt that it's in it in us, but how do we excavate it? And how do we put it into a position where it can be optimized? I think there's an anointing that optimizes your gift, that fertilizes it, that causes it to flourish. That God said your gift will bring you before great men. You understand what I'm saying to you? It will bring you right before great men. Your gift will do it. Somebody shout, I'm gifted. I don't believe you. You didn't say it like you meant it. Yeah, yeah. Stop being so hard on yourself and recognize that you're gifted. As we prepare to worship the Lord in our giving, we are giving as gifted people. Not desperate people, not nervous people, not worried people, but gifted people. And I want to challenge you that online, God is going to create a platform for your gift to sit in. Whether it's a business, whether it's a company, whether it's music, whether it's stage, whether it's drama, whether it's chemistry, whether it's science, whether it's technology, God is going to create a platform for your gift. You may have had to go through the desert to get to the promised land. But the promised land is coming into your life. Can you hear what I'm saying to you? And I want to pray over what you have in vision. I want to pray over what you have in vision. And I want you to get seed in the ground. Because you cannot have harvest without seed. You cannot have harvest without seed. And we got a special treat for you today. Tamar's going to come and sing for us. And as she prepares to sing the Lord, that's right off of our project that's just been released. I want to remind you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That he that sows in tears shall reap in joy. There's no need in you hating me because of my glory, because you don't understand my story. It was the one. things that I went through that brought me to where I am right now. And if I boast, I boast in the Lord. And I step from glory one. to glory to glory. Somebody, somebody, anybody, shout glory. No, no church, no church. church.
stand.
thank you for all the things we take for granted, like oxygen and blood flow and circulation and tissue and tone and bone and all the things you do for us. We cannot pay you, but we honor you with this scene to acknowledge the fact that we did not get here by ourselves. Now bless the seed and the sword in Jesus' name. Amen. Pass it to the left if you have something to pass. If you didn't give on your phone, then pass your seed to the left. Glory to God. That's right. It's a good time for a praise. PMPs, serve the people of God. Can I get a good shout in here? Going to the word of God, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 through 18. There you will find the text that the Holy Spirit has underscored for me today to share with you. It is illuminating in my soul.